gathered in Christ's name, let us praise God, who is our certain hope in all of life's varied circumstances. In the face of death, believe the good news that the scriptures proclaim. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. As a father has compassion for his children, so God has compassion for those who seek him. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. In the stillness of this place, we turn to God, who is our beginning and our end. For after all, from dust we have been made, and to dust we return. We have come together in this place within the strengthening fellowship of family and friends to praise God for the life of C.B. Jack Barker. We have also come to share our grief with God and with one another, to reaffirm our faith in God's unfailing goodness, and to hear again God's promise of resurrection. And of course, to commend our friend Jack to God's everlasting care. Let us pray, friends. Holy One, in our sorrow we seek the comfort of your presence. Let your word be a lamp to our weary feet and a light to our path. Holy Wisdom, enter our troubled hearts this hour. We remember before you this day our brother Jack. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends so that we might know him and love him as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. We remember the song in his heart and the twinkle in his eye. In your boundless compassion, console us as we mourn. Grant that your word might shine brightly therein, that we might discover the fullness of new life's promises. Until we are reunited and reconciled with all those who have gone before, this we pray. Amen. Hear these words from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 through 33. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it. To put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion, according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, my. 
I first met Jack and Mary Barker 58 years ago. I was an entering sophomore at Chattanooga High School. My mother and I went to city to register that morning. Mrs. Royer, the, bo the guidance counselor, listened to us for a while and about 30 minutes later had had enough, sent us upstairs to see the new class sponsor, Mrs. Barker. Three days later, I met Jack. We've been friends ever since. When my father was transferred at the end of my junior year, that I should stay in Chattanooga for my senior year in high school. That was 56 years ago, and to my surprise, my mother said yes. We've lived many, many years since, have lived all over the country, and are glad to be back in the southern United States. When you have known someone for 58 years, as we did both Jack and Mary, you know that they're not perfect, but they brought us into their family. We knew Papa and Mama Burroughs and Dunlap. We knew Mr. and Mrs. Barker, Jack's parents, and of course, uh, Jack and Mary. My first trip to big time football, which I later had the responsibility of trying to manage, was a, a big occasion. We went to New York City together. We went to Nayland Stadium together. We've been literally at virtually every corner of this great country and some other places together. Jack was particularly interested that we know more about UT football and the local world that he had come to know. Mary, on the other hand, took us to our first opera, our first Broadway show, our first big band exposure. They both tried to teach me to dance, one of many things at which they failed. Mary Barker was with me when I wrote college apps, attended first college intro, and then was at three installations at Center, at Georgia, and at Pepperdine. I think, as I stand here today, how many eras we have been through together. How we've become part of the family, and if my uh, calculations are correct, and they're at least close to correct, we've spent at least 35 Christmases together since, and countless other times. To my knowledge, we've never had a crossword. That was because once Mary spoke, we all shut up and listened. <laughs> I had wonderful parents, now departed from this life, and in a way, two sets of parents, both natural and adopted. And it's unusual when the child adopts the parents, but that's exactly what we did with Jack and Mary. My children, when they came along, viewed them simply as part of the family. My grandchildren became their great-grandchildren, and we have uh, a few less gifts to buy this Christmas. There are paintings that were given us that hang in our living room. Mary B., on many occasions, helped me even when I was 
a college president many years later, I would call her about a particular bind that I was in. Jack became older and still provided guidance. My mother and dad, Mary and Jack, became great friends, and I owe an unspeakable level of gratitude to all of them. I thought over the last few days about the way the world works. It's almost never exactly like we think it should be. But of all the blessings that I have had, having wonderful parents as I did, but also adopted parents like Jack and Mary have been an integral part of what we have happened to become. I will miss Jack and Mary, particularly as I miss Jack as I did Mary a few short years ago. Many of you who are here today are here because of your relationship with all of them. And Mary and I feel the same way. So I would simply say as we start this memorial service to Jack, rest in peace. We are grateful for all the good things you did while you were with us and we'll look forward to seeing you on another day. Those of you that knew Jack, which I assume is every single person in this room, you know how fond he was of music during his life. I believe he was particularly fond of the old hymns. And the one I'm about to sing for you certainly meets that criterion. It was written in the early 1800s. It was arranged in 1862, and the words to it were written in the early 1700s. So this is old on three counts. My Jesus, as thou wilt. Oh, 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 oh,
Our second scripture comes from the first letter attributed to John. Chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Let us listen for God's word in these words. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. We know each other because we knew Jack. Jack defined friend for many of us. If you were Jack's friend, you were going to be friends with lots of other people you just hadn't met yet. Jack had an ever-expanding, widening circle of friends. Together, he and Mary touched many communities, contributed to those communities of their time, talent, and treasure, and brought us into those communities together. There's just not much you can say about a friend that is a true friend that wouldn't be said of Jack. He encouraged, he consoled, he congratulated. And those notes we received from Jack in his own handwriting weren't dashed off without a considerable amount of forethought. They were personal. They were meant for you. They were meant to address you at the right moment. That sense of friendship is hard to come by. That sense is either inborn or inculcated in some real and effective way because of a want to. Jack wanted to be a friend, and he knew what it meant to be a friend. But before we confer on Jack's sainthood, you need to know something else about him. Jack could also be, as a friend, a fun-loving friend. Oh yeah, he loved, and he loved deeply, but he also loved having fun. And part of the fun he loved having was getting other people into situations where they hadn't been before. A 23-year-old teetotaler was introduced by Jack in the city of New Orleans to a concoction known as the Singapore Sling. (laughs) That corruption has continued to this day. (laughs) And were Dr. Jean Cates here today, she would say yes, and with that small step toward corruption, I now have developed my own drink known as Gene's Drink. (laughs) Jack and Mary took us with them to New Orleans in 1969. We had Thanksgiving at a cafeteria. We had visited with a friend of his in Birmingham the night before. We went to all the restaurants you're supposed to go to in New Orleans. We stayed in the quarter. We had a wonderful time, and it started Gene on a path down corruption. 
the reason I'm allowed to say that today is because she's not here. <laughs> she's still in Florida. But she sends through me her deepest affection for Jack, <laughs> for the corruption, for the friendship, and for the ongoing loving to have fun. There was a favorite scripture of Mary's that I think Jack shared. From 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, the sixth verse, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. As Michael so eloquently said, we look forward to seeing Jack on another day. Alan, I wish I had warned you, or perhaps I should have warned Gene, that we're live streaming this service for anyone, anyone across cyberspace who wants to mourn along with us. And so your confession on her behalf is, is now living in, in cyberspace. So for the miracles of, of science and friendship, thanks be to God. This last scripture comes from the Gospel of John, and it's the story of Jesus and Jesus's friend, Lazarus. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. This is good news. Thanks be to God. I have a question for you, Jack would say. Our visits would often begin this way, and Jack would present a post-it note with not just one, but a host of questions about me, about my family or where I was from. He knew I had served on staff with Michael Moody, a former minister here at First Christian Chattanooga during Michael's tenure as senior minister of Central Christian Church in Lexington, Kentucky, so he'd ask about Michael. He'd ask me for an email address, or he'd ask about a picture of me that he'd seen on social media. And once when he found a picture of me at a protest march, he called me brazen. He'd ask about someone in the church that he didn't recognize, or he'd ask my opinion about something and then nod, or maybe grin, or maybe neither. Sometimes, we'd share a laugh. Sometimes we'd share a conversation about something difficult, which was especially true during the days of Mary's declining health. Sometimes there would be tears, but we would always part having shared a smile. And perhaps during that time we spent together, we'd discover an answer or two. Living to the age of 98 takes a lot. It takes a lot of heart, it takes a lot of grit, it takes a lot of help, and it takes a lot of hope. And sometimes those first three things, the heart, the grit, and the help, 
Those are the things that make up hope. There's the memory of Mary at the base of that. There's family like his cousin Tracy and sister-in-law Barbara and her family. There's adopted family like Mike and Mary and Alan. And a dear friend like Glenn who cared for Jack so well. You were Jack's grit and heart. You all were his help. And with every visit and phone call, check-in and weekend visit, you helped buoy his hope in this last chapter of his life. That was a gift you shared with him. Now, my choice of words here is very deliberate. It was a gift you shared with him. Because hope is ultimately a gift from God. That's what we hear in all of these scriptures that we encounter today. In the book of Lamentations, even in exile, Israel professes hope in God for return and restoration and reconciliation. In this first letter attributed to John, there is hope that humanity is participating in the fullness of God through Christ. There's hope that God fully revealed means that we can be like God, part of Christ's body, part of God's good work in the world. And in the brief story that we hear from John's gospel, we hear the hope of Christ's resurrection, of a love so powerful that it overcomes even death. Those of you I named and all of you who consider Jack a friend, you shared hope with him, particularly in that last chapter. But you also know that he was sharing hope with you. His sly smile, his singing, his dancing, those post-it note questions at the heart of getting to know you, his stories, which often accompanied a scanned photo of him and Mary doing something utterly fabulous somewhere even more fabulous. Were not these gifts of hope that he shared with us? And does this not mean that he shared something that looked like the hope that Israel had, the hope of resurrection, the hope at the heart of the reconciliation of all things? That does not look like that when he shared hope with us. The last time I saw Jack, he was tired. He didn't have much to talk about. Time was short, and he was okay with that. I did what I often do on visits like this. I anointed him with some oil, and we prayed together. He held my hand gently, and I leaned in and said to him, I have a question for you. And he knew my answer before I could even ask it. I'm okay he said with a nod and a smile. I'm okay. Sometimes after 98 years, that's how hope fulfilled is best summed up. With the gentle peace of an assured, I'm okay, that sounds like grace and gratitude and peace-filled rest. For this life, this gift of hope, That was Jack Barker. I give thanks to God. And I invite you to pray with me. Giver of life, we open our hearts to you just as we are. We celebrate your gift of life freely given, but we are grieved by a sense of loss in the face of death. The love which binds us to one another leaves us aching as ties are broken. So accept our tears as emblems of devotion and transform them into waters of life to nourish us in the days ahead. We give thanks for your gift of the life of Jack who has blessed the lives of those who have known and loved him. With confidence, we now entrust Jack to your unfailing love and overflowing goodness. Through the power that raised Christ from the dead to live eternally with you, lift up Jack, your servant, to life fulfilled beyond our imagining.
accept him as he is with all of his frailties and strengths. Embrace him as the friend he was to so many. Gracious God, strengthen us, the grieving, through the gift of your spirit to face the future with confidence. Grant that the changes of life may leave us stronger as we journey through this life. Be present with us. Help us to knit more firmly the ties that bind us one to another. Help us to love boldly and freely and embrace your people everywhere until we are all united, reconciled, and held tightly in your embrace. In the name of the one who called us disciples, the one we call the Christ, the one that we call a friend, we pray. Amen. And friends, as you go from this place, may the hope of the living God guide you. May the peace of the living Christ sustain you, and may the wisdom of the living Spirit inspire you. And may your feet, as they would for Jack, lead you through life dancing. Thanks be to God. Thank you.